Hello and welcome to News Tonight on Rajya Sabha Television. I'm Ashwarya Kapoor. In the top story today, we'll be looking at the second death that happened in the 48 hours, that of a doctor in a Vyapam scam. Also, in the big international story, we'll be looking at the Greek referendum for a bailout deal. But first up, the headlines that we are tracking. Second Vyapam case related death in 48 hours. Body of Arun Sharma, Dean of a medical college found in a Delhi hotel. Sharma was assisting an SID probe into the case. Madhya Pradesh Chief Minister Shivrat Singh Chauhan promises SID probe into death of Delhi based journalists covering the case. Opposition asks why not a CBI investigation? Major setback to case proceedings in the 2007 Ajmer blast. Three more prosecution witnesses turn hostile. 13 witnesses have gone against their testimony in the case so far. And millions of Greeks vote in crucial referendum to determine their nation's destiny in the Eurozone. Opinion polls find the contest is too close to call. biggest story of the day, two more deaths in the Vyakam uh, scam case has triggered MP government's call for an SIT probe into the case. Now, Chief Minister Shivrat Singh Chauhan said that he is open to any probe to crack the series of mysterious deaths related to the case, the latest victims being a journalist and a doctor. The MP government has agreed to the demands of the scribe's family and sent the Visra samples to Ames for forensic test. These are the two latest victims of what is seen as a series of at least 27 mysterious deaths in the Vyapam scam case. Dr. Arun Sharma, who was probing fake examinees in the exam scam, was found dead in Delhi late on Saturday. He had taken over as Dean of the NS Medical College only two months ago. The earlier Dean, Dr. D.K. Sakale, was found burned to death at his home exactly a year ago. So far, the cops haven't found anything suspicious regarding the Dean's death. Nothing foul as of now uh, uh, we have found and uh, we have sent the body for post-mortem and we have started, we are investigating it, we are collecting all scientific evidences. Earlier on Saturday, Akshay Singh, a television journalist working with the TV Today group, died in MP's Jhabua after sudden illness. He was taken to hospital moments after he interviewed parents of a girl who was found dead near railway tracks after her name figured in the scam. Though post-mortem report has ruled out foul play in Akshay Singh's death, there are demands for probe to ensure there was no unnatural cause. <laughs> उनके होट हिलने लग गए और मुंह से उनके धाग आया और हाथ अचानक मुंह करने लग गया मुंह करने के बाद उनको अचानक गिरने लग गए जेल में तो हॉस्पिटल में ले गए तो वहां पर डॉक्टर अवेलेबल नहीं थे नर्स वगैरह ने भी चेक करा वहां पे और वहां पे भी उनकी नर्स वगैरह नहीं चली थी तो उन्होंने बोला कि शायद इसकी डेड हो गई एंड दिस इज मे बी द 45th डेथ एंड टुडे मध्य प्रदेश फॉर दिस स्कैम इज गेटिंग नोन नॉट ओनली इन इंडिया बट ऑल ओवर द वर्ल्ड वी आर गेटिंग सच अ बैड नेम it's high time that we that they we went for a independent investigation and a supreme court monitoring what is happening today nobody believes after two more deaths the mp government is ready to probe why people linked to the scam are dying chief minister shivrat singh chauhan has called for an sit probe into the scribe's death aaj main sit ko patra likh raha hu sit jiska gathan हाई कोर्ट के रिटायर्ड जज की अध्यक्षता में सेवानिवृत्त जो जो जज थे उनकी अध्यक्षता में माननीय हाई कोर्ट ने किया इट वुड बी एब्सोल्युटली इंपॉर्टेंट दैट एन अ वेरी फेयर इंक्वायरी इज हेल्ड सो दैट ऑल डाउट्स कैन बी सेट एट रेस्ट the Vyapam scam reportedly involves a massive admission and recruitment racket involving several bureaucrats and politicians. Some reports claim that the number of dead associated with the scam so far is more than that of the figures claimed by the government. The most high-profile death was that of Madhya Pradesh Governor Ram Naresh Yadav's son, Shelly Shyadav. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. A whistleblower in the Vyapam scam, Dr. Anand Dry, was among many people who reacted to the latest deaths of people connected with the case. Now, suspecting the use of poison to cause uh, these deaths, uh, he said that it was a systematic attempt to suppress the case. 
Now, others, including political leaders, are calling for a Supreme Court monitored CBI probe. With death after death being reported in the Vyapam case, it's a question everyone is asking who is getting away with murder? Expressing concern, opposition parties are training their guns on the ruling BJP, both in Madhya Pradesh and the centre. It's most, uh, I mean, it's unprecedented that there are deaths of over, claims of deaths of over more than 40 people, 45, 47 people now, under mysterious circumstances associated with this case. Two senior journalists who were reporting on these investigations have also died under mysterious circumstances, including nine of the important witnesses in this case. So we think that there should be a thorough inquiry that needs to be done, a CBI inquiry. We express strong concern and uh, condemnation of the way the Madhya Pradesh government uh, is dealing with the entire case. And this is a fit case that needs to be probed by very higher authorities, monitored by uh, the Supreme Court or High Court. Vyapam is probably the most scary, the most dangerous and the most widespread scam in independent Indian history. The government of Madhya Pradesh very successfully and I will say openly with the help of the local media of Madhya Pradesh has suppressed this scam and uh, while being uh, in, in alliance with a large number of institutions in Madhya Pradesh, it has completely killed the investigations. Witnesses and accused involved in the case are worried. They're not only feeling threatened, they seriously doubt if the truth will ever come out. I want to ask the Prime Minister to tell you how they opened the door. If they open the door, they will be able to get more information from the door. Everyone is afraid. If I have taken this bill, then they will tell you how they opened the door. The STF has given more than 200 people to the door. The chickens are going to the door, the people are going to the door. What do you want to do? You see, the investigation is going to be done and you can take the door in front of you. The scam was first reported in 2013. Since then, estimates as to the number of people associated with then case who have died vary from 27 to 46. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. All right, a Vyapam scam case getting murkier by the day. Let's move on in the bulletin now. Finance Minister Arun Jaitley has made a strong case for the passage of GST and land acquisition bills, saying that they were necessary to create jobs and to remove poverty. Allaying uh, apprehensions over complexities of GST, Jaitley has said that the proposed taxation system will end the cobweb of various taxes and also miseries being faced by the trading community. While the GST bill is being scrutinized by a select committee of Rajya Sabha, the land acquisition bill is being discussed by the Joint Committee of Parliament. Both the committees are expected to submit their reports at the beginning of the next session. Jaitley's appeal for the passage of GST and land acquisition bills comes amid fears of opposition disrupting the forthcoming monsoon session over the Lalit Modi controversy. Meanwhile, commenting on uh, the socio-economic and caste census, Jaitley said that NDA government was trying to create conditions for accelerating growth to 8 to 10 percent through a set of measures. And in the major setback to case proceedings in the 2007 Ajmer blast, three more prosecution witnesses have made a U-turn. Reports suggest that the three crucial prosecution witnesses have now turned hostile and gone back on their testimonies, bringing the total number of hostile witnesses to 13. The statements of the witnesses were recorded before a judicial magistrate to ensure that there was no pressure from investigators. Significantly, one of the hostile witnesses is Randhir Singh, who is now a minister in the Jharkhand government. The development comes days after the public prosecutor in the 2008 Maligao blast case admitted that she had been under pressure to go soft on the accused. There are 13 witnesses hostile. And look, the prosecution case depends on witnesses because it is a substantive evidence. It is a direct evidence that comes to the witness box. If it is hostile, the prosecution case is very damaged. And the prosecution case is not damaged. These are all important things. There was a statement of 164 statement in the magistrate during the investigation. That's why these witnesses are very important. And for more updates from across the nation, let's go nationwide.
The National Investigation Agency has shifted the Sunil Joshi murder case back to Madhya Pradesh. The NIA said that it found no evidence of a terror angle to it. Sunil Joshi was charged cheated by the NIA in connection with some Chhota Express train blast of 2007. NIA suspected Joshi had a role in some Chhota Express blast besides explosions at Maligao, Ajmer Darga and Mecca Masjid in Hyderabad. And the decision comes after NIA had filed several applications before courts in Madhya Pradesh seeking directions to the state police to hand over the investigation to it. The CBI has claimed that the former telecom minister Dayanidhi Maran was evasive during his questioning over 3 days on the alleged misuse of his office from 2004 to 2007. Maran had allegedly installed high capacity BSNL lines at his residences in Delhi and Chennai to facilitate the speedy transmission of his family channel Sun TV. It reportedly caused the exchequer a loss of over 1.8 crore rupees. The operation between the army and militants near the line of control in Jammu and Kashmir's Uri sector entered the third day today. A fierce encounter broke out on Friday after the army launched an attack following inputs about infiltration and the presence of 3 to 4 militants in the area. So far two militants and an army jawan has been killed in the gun battle. The Indian Space Research Organisation or the ISRO will launch five British satellites on 10th of July. Now, this is ISRO's biggest commercial mission so far and will be executed along with Antrix. ISRO will deploy the reliable Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle or the PSLV to put the satellites into orbit. The launch pad at the Sri Harikota in Andhra Pradesh will be used for the mission. A suspicious foreign fishing boat was intercepted by the Coast Guard off the Kerala coast today. The 12-member crew from Iran have also been taken into custody by the Kerala police and are being interrogated. The police also recovered prohibited satellite phones from the boat. All right, in news tonight, we'll take a very short break. But up next, we'll get to all the international news, including a new video claims Islamic State militants are conducting mass execution in Palmyra's ancient amphitheater. And also, the Tunisian government declares state of emergency a week after 38 tourists were killed in a beach hotel attack. Details to follow. Stay with us. <laughs> Hello and a warm welcome to our special report. The program that brings you a ground zero view from whichever part of the country the Rajya Sabha TV cameras are travelling. It is the same village where the Telangana agitation actually began. We at Rajya Sabha TV bring you the first pictures of the landfall site. This is the main nerve center where the legal battle for the Kaveri water dispute began. When you are moving around this Niyamgiri hill area there are 41 streams like these which you have to cross. No one understands India better than we do. What special report only on Rajya Sabha television. Welcome back. Let's get you some international news. Well, millions of Greeks lined up at polling stations today to vote in the crucial referendum on whether to accept or reject the tough terms of an aid offer to stave off uh, the financial collapse. Now, Greek Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras said that the vote would determine its destiny in the eurozone. According to opinion polls, Greeks appear divided over the issue. The turnout is expected to be high after a frantic week of campaigning. Greeks lined up in front of polling booths on Sunday. in the high stakes referendum to decide the future of the nation after weeks of unfruitful talks between the government and the international creditors the decision was left in the hands of the people on whether to accept the terms of the bailout package selutone selutone and then ekho bistosini hallo elpizo na valme mia lo ya i elnes ke na boresume na monoisume ke na ξαναχτίσουμε από την αρχή να ανασυγκροτήσουμε τη χώρα μας γιατί έτσι όπως έχουμε καταδίσει εάν δεν ομονοήσουμε δεν πρόκειται να έχουμε καμία, μα, κανένα μα κανένα μέλλον. Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras has been urging people to vote against stricter austerity measures. He was welcomed at the polling stations by crowds of supporters. The Greek government accused the international creditors of blackmailing them 
to accept the bailout terms. Supra said a no vote will give the government more leverage in talks with the creditors. The Greek government wants a very strong statement. A statement of accuracy, of accuracy, of the statement that it has in the hands of the decision. Πολλοί μπορεί να αγνοήσουν, μπορούν να αγνοήσουν τη βούληση μιας κυβέρνησης. Κανείς δεν μπορεί να αγνοήσει τη βούληση ενός λαού να ζήσει. Να ζήσει με αποφαστικότητα να πάρει τη ζωή στα χέρια του. Now, what is It is a pursuit of political agendas by means of inspiring fear in people. Mind-numbing fear. Well, the... Uh, choice that we were given, accept a non-viable agreement, or we shut your banks, it can be classified as such. Cyprus's political opponents are angered by the government's inability to reach a compromise with its lenders. Many warn that a no vote will only put the emergency funds in jeopardy and hasten exit from the euro. Σήμερα οι Έλληνες αποφασίζουμε για τη μοίρα της χώρας μας. Ψηφίζουμε. Ναι στην Ελλάδα, ψηφίζουμε ναι στην Ευρώπη. Ευχαριστώ πολύ. The result of the referendum is expected later today. Meanwhile, the Eurozone is waiting to see what the Greek government would do after the result. The Eurogroup is ready to consider any new request from Greece to resume bailout talks. Bureau Report, Raja Sabha TV. And Israel has hailed India's decision to abstain a UN vote as a significant shift in the center's policy towards the country. Now, Israeli envoy to India, Daniel Carmon, made a special mention of India, expressing gratitude for not supporting yet another anti-Israel resolution by the United Nations. According to reports, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu had reached out to his Indian counterpart, Narendra Modi, and urged him to abstain during the UNHRC voting. On Friday, India had abstained from voting on a resolution on Palestine adopted by the United Nations Human Rights Council. The resolution called for accountability by parties involved in last year's conflict in Gaza. India, however, maintained that there was no change in its long-standing position on support to the Palestinian cause. And U.S. presidential candidate Hillary Clinton has accused China of stealing huge amounts of government information and trying to hack into everything that doesn't move in America. Now, Hillary's language on China appeared to be far stronger than usually used by President Barack Obama's Democratic administration. Hillary also said that while she wanted to see China's peaceful rise, U.S. needs to be fully vigilant. U.S. Democratic presidential candidate Hillary Clinton on Sunday unleashed some of the strongest words on China's alleged hacking of U.S. computers. Speaking at an event in New Hampshire, Hillary said China had stolen a large amount of government data and that U.S. needs to be vigilant. They're also trying to hack into everything that doesn't move in America, stealing commercial secrets, blueprints from defense contractors, stealing huge amounts of government information, all looking for an advantage. Make no mistake, they know they're in a competition and they're going to do everything they can to win it. U.S. has accused China of the recent theft of personal data of nearly 4 million federal employees. China denies any involvement, calling U.S. claims irresponsible. Clinton urged vigilance not only in the cyber world, but also on China's growing military might. Clinton was referring to China's building of man-made islands in disputed waters. We also have to be... Uh, fully vigilant that China's military is growing very quickly. They are establishing military installations that, again, threaten countries we have treaties with, like the Philippines, uh, because they are building on contested property. Republican presidential candidates have used the reported cyber attack to accuse President Obama's administration of incompetence. The FBI is investigating the intrusion that involved the Federal Office of Personal Management responsible for overseeing personal records of U.S. employees. The Bureau has not, however, given evidence that pinpoints China, nor has it come up with a possible motive. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. All right, let's get you some more international news in Global Buzz. Islamic State militants conducted a mass execution in Palmyra's ancient amphitheatre. A video purportedly shows uh, the militants leaving the notorious Palmyra prison where the soldiers were said to be held before the execution. 
The victims were taken to the ancient amphitheater of Palmara and they were lined on stage. Now, 25 men were killed in a shot to their head. Palmara was home to Roman-era ruins. Islamic State fighters captured it in May this year. The U.S.-led coalition has carried out a series of airstrikes against the Islamic State targets in Syria. The U.S. military described the 16 strikes as one of the largest assaults carried out in Syria so far. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights said that at least 23 Islamic State members were killed in the attack. Tunisia declared emergency just over a week after 38 tourists were killed in an attack in the resort city of Suse. Tunisian President Baji Kaid Esprisi said that exceptional measures were needed as the country was in a state of war. The emergency will be in place for a renewable period of 30 days. Pope Francis today left Rome for his first trip to Latin America, where he will champion the rights of the poor and that of the planet. Francis' trip to Ecuador, Bolivia and Paraguay is his first visit abroad since a landmark encyclical urge to defence of the environment. Well, the Champagne vineyards of France are among 11 new additions to the list of UNESCO's World Heritage Sites. Well, other sites are listed are Singapore's Botanic Gardens, the Arbukir Fortress in Turkey, the Susa and Maimand Cave dwellings in Iran, the Tusi sites in China, the Bakche historic sites in Korea, and the Great Burkhan Khaldun Mountain and its surrounding sacred landscape in Mongolia. Two Danish sites are Moravian Church Settlement Christiansfeld and the Par Force Hunting Landscape in North Zealand also figure in this list. Well, time to take another short break. Up next, we'll get to all the sports news. Post Chile stunned nine time champions Argentina to win their first ever Copa America title. And in Wimbledon, Andy Murray sails through to the fourth round. But uh, women's uh, defending champion Petra Kvitova is knocked out. Details after a short break. Three, two, one, zero. As science beckons India into the future. Rajya Sabha Television partakes the responsibility, bringing technology to the Indian people. Let's take a look at various important science events in the country, monitoring scientific advances as they unravel. Intergovernmental panel on climate change has proposed a complete ban on fossil fuels. Welcome to Eureka. Interviewing the country's greatest minds. Project the power of science to benefit and transform India. Rajya Sabha Television, Democracy at Work. Welcome back. Let's get you all the sports news now. Well, Chile secured the first major trophy in its uh, history on Sunday on home soil. They beat the Argentine side 4-1 on penalties on the ground full of Chilean supporters who erupted in celebrations on winning the Copa America final. Argentina missed the magic of Lionel Messi and looked lifeless in the shootouts. Take a look. In a fight befitting a finale, Chile clinched the Copa America title for the first time on penalties. Alexis Sanchez netted the winning goal to beat a struggling Argentina 4-1. The match had ended nil-nil after the stipulated 90 minutes. The extra time also failed to produce a goal. Neither side dominated and the chances were few and far between. Few sides were able to match up to Chile's fast-paced football leading up to the finals. Argentina's star player Lionel Messi too was uninspiring against the side. Gonzalo Higuain came close to breaking the stalemate for Argentina in the last minute of regulation time, but with little luck. Sanchez had one great chance to steal the game for Chile in extra time, but blazed over with just the goalkeeper to beat. La, la, la idea del partido era neutralizar a jugadores tan importantes como el mejor jugador del mundo, teniendo la, la posibilidad de eh, dominar el pleito. La idea era hacer un equipo extremadamente protagonista para que el rival no se apodere 
del, eh, del dominio del juego. O, o, eh, seguramente si Argentina se hubiera apoderado en algún momento del dominio, Messi te iba a hacer saber que es el mejor del mundo. That set the stage for the penalty shootout. Both sides score their opening penalty, with Matias Fernandez scoring for Chile and Messi for Argentina. Arturo Vidal powerfully dispatched Chile's second. Higuain and Eva Banega disappointed for Argentina. Chile held their nerve to score the third with Charles Aranguiz and then Sanchez showed supreme composure to chip his effort right down the middle and send the crowd into raptures. Chile showed great spirit to seal the victory to end almost a century of competing in the Copa America without claiming a title. Undoubtedly, they were the well-deserved champions. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, Chile is a moment of glory there. Well, more uh, sporting action in sports speed now. Indian men finished off their campaign in the Hockey League World League at the fourth spot in the playoff for the third and the fourth place. The Indian team went down to Great Britain 5-1. The British team put up a solid display to go up 5-0 in the fourth quarter. However, India managed to pull one back in the dying moments of the game when Rupinder Pal Singh found the net uh, through a penalty corner. Formula One champion Lewis Hamilton won an incident-packed British Grand Prix to claim back-to-back -back victories on home soil. Hamilton finished ahead of Nico Rosberg to extend his lead over his Mercedes teammate to 17 points in the championship. Now, this was his uh, fifth victory from nine races in this season. Ferrari's uh, Sebastian Vettel claimed the third spot final ahead of Felipe Massa, who led the opening phase of the race. Britain's Andy Murray reached the fourth round of Wimbledon with a four-set victory over Italy's Andreas Seppi. Murray will next face Croatia's Ivo Karlovic. In women's singles, defending champion Petra Kvitova made a shock exit in the third round. The two-time winner was stunned by 28th seed Jelena Jankovic of Serbia. In fact, Jelena Jankovic came back from a set behind to win 6-3, 5-7, 4-6 to enter the fourth round. World number one, uh, in fact, world number 10, Angelique Kerber of Germany also crashed out of the women's singles. Jamaican sprinter Safa Powell uh, ran the second fastest 100 meters of the year to win the Diamond League meeting in Paris. Powell ran a season's best 9.81 seconds to beat Francis Jimmy Bicot, who equaled the European record of 9.86. Powell also beat his 9.84 seconds record, which he ran in June's Jamaican National Trials. America's Justin Gatlin has run the fastest time of the year at 9.74 seconds. Well, that's it from me and my team in this edition of News Tonight. Thanks so much for watching.